Are you okay, mate? I mean, I've heard of tire kicking, but not wing knocking. Hello and welcome back to TGTV, and more specifically, welcome back to the Paris Motor Show. I've already been doing some bits and bobs here, but what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to take you around the main releases of the whole event and show you the coolest cars on display and the bits and bobs that I am personally interested in. I think first things first, I'm going to check out AMG. Let's start alphabetically and start with AMG, have a little look around Mercedes and see what there is because they've been very, very busy bees. The AMG line has got absolutely enormous this year in particular. And I want to show you some of the cool cars that they've got coming and I might potentially have coming. So let's crack on. So I think one of the most exciting releases of the Paris Motor Show for AMG is the A35. Everyone is talking about it. And I think, I guess everyone just loves a hot hatch or a hyper hot hatch. But we have it here behind me. And this spec I believe is called Denim Blue. So it's an all new color I believe for AMG. There's so much she's sat in at the moment. Let's come around this way anyway. And some very cool decals around the side. I'll take you a little, for a little walk around the car. Wheel finish is actually very, very nice and it matches the decals. I like this colour, I'm a sucker for blue cars. It is actually very, very cool. What then, I hear you ask, is the Mercedes A35 AMG? Oh, Henry Catchpole sat in there. Well then, it is a 302 brake horsepower, two litre turbocharged engine. It has on-demand four-wheel drive and it features a specially stiffened chassis when it goes on sale in the UK market at some point very, very soon. It is the level below, shall we say, what we all know now as the A45. I believe there will be a hotter version of this coming, but this is designed to take out the likes of the M140i, the S3, the Golf R, dare I say the Golf GTI, the i30N, and that level of the hatchback market. The typical hot hatches, not the hyper hatches. Uh, so this will be leveled squarely at them. And I must say with 302 brake horsepower, loads of AMG tech in it, and an interior that you come to inspect from the AMGs, I think this thing will do rather, rather well. Specifically, if they price it properly, let me just see now, I don't wanna ruin Mr. Catchpole's video here. Um, but if they price this thing properly, this is gonna be an absolute weapon and there's gonna be trouble to the likes of the M140i and the S3 and the Golf R because they've enjoyed quite a good run um, Mercedes have left them alone really in the hot hatch market but this thing is going to come and spoil the party I think so it'll be very very interesting once these get on the road and people start testing them seeing what they're like it'll be very very interesting I want to hear it I want to drive it I want to see what it's like because the A45 is an absolute weapon so if this is anything like that it's going to cause chaos so I'm really looking forward to getting in one of these very very soon moving swiftly on then to the BMW stand I must admit there's not anything of huge interest to me here but that was a 3 Series Berlin or something We've got an i8 Roadster, which is of very little interest to me. We've got 7 Series again, of very little interest. Uh, the iX3, which is actually quite cool. I'm actually becoming increasingly more interested in hybrid technology, and that is actually quite a cool alternative to the usual EVs you see on the market. Let's, should we barrel in here? Are we allowed? I'm just looking for something of interest, to be honest with you. Uh, what's this? New 3 Series. That is actually quite cool. We'll have that. New 3 Series does look good. BMWs of old have been accused of being a little bit boring. Let's have a look at the interior, see how they sorted this out. Ah, uh, yeah, it is improved. It is improved. I still don't think it's up there with Mercedes, I'll be honest. That's my honest opinion as well. Nobody's paying me to say anything. That's my honest opinion, but it does look good. It does look good, and I do look forward to the, uh, the hot variants of this. Anyway, let's get away from this. They're having too much fun in there. Coming through then, what else have we got on the BMW stand? We have got oh, another 3 Series. Brilliant. This is another 3 Series, I'm going home. Right, I'm off. Why have they got so many? Get rid of them, what's going on here? Ah, we have uh, the 8 Series, or the 8 as they call it. That does look very, very cool actually. I am a massive fan of that. They've got this nice new like satin effect on the kidney grills. We do like that, a bit of tan inside. We'll absolutely have that BMW, good work. Coming through then, what else have we got? Walk with me. We've got X5s of no real interest to me. We've got another 8 Series. Actually, there is an exciting launch this year from BMW. It's coming through, or maybe not, as the case may be. There is an exciting launch. We're going to go and look at it. It's not that exciting for me. It's not on my to-do or to-buy list. But the new Z4, this is a very important car for BMW. And it's recently received a complete overhaul. 
So this is the all new Z4 and it's just been revealed at this motor show. It looks quite cool. It does look quite cool, I'll be honest. Let me know in the comments what you think anyway. M M40i does look pretty cool though and you can tell it's been completely revamped. It's quite nice. But anyway, that's not really a bit of me. I wouldn't be driving one anytime soon. New 8 series does look good. There's another one here. Oh, M5 competition pack. So the M5 came out and people accused it of being a little bit, uh, a little bit drab, not quite exciting enough in the looks department. And BMW being BMW have brought out a competition pack version of it already. There's loads of reviews of this car already on YouTube. It is a hoot. I really, really like these. I had one from Park Lane a little while ago, the standard M5. And it is a lunatic when you press the right buttons, but very, very civilized when you want it to be. And we've also got an M2 competition here with all the competition bits and bobs stuck to it, which reminds me of my M4 DTM. God rest its soul. I think that's pretty much it from BMW, to be honest with you. Bit of a whistle stop to all them. But there's loads to get through at the show, so let's go and check something else out. Land Rover then have this big coupe, SV coupe thingy. What's it called, lad? The big thing with the two doors behind me. Oh, the SV coupe. Oh, I got it right. Like there we go. I think that's pretty much it on here. We've got the facelift uh, Range Rover, which is king of wafting. Uh, but it's a bit sensible for me, to be honest with you. They are very, very cool. I mean, it's just, it's the king of the 4x4s, really. I'm now heading, ladies and gentlemen, towards Porsche. And this is the Pink Pig wrap. I actually saw this car going around Le Mans live in the flesh. And Mr. Gravelwood has actually copied the wrap on this. Wonder whose idea that was. Very, very cool. But anyway, let's head in to the part where they have Porsche and all the rest of it. They have Audi in here, Toyota, and some other bits and bobs. But I think Porsche have been very, very busy. There's some cool stuff to see in here. So they've got a historic vibe at Porsche this year. But lots of the old kind of icons of Porsche Past here, we've got the Carrera GT. We've got the GT, what, 911 GT1? Yep, 911 GT1 here. And we've got the 959 as well, all sat next to each other in the same color, in the kind of very typical Porsche silver. That one's got a very nice brown interior, not that you can pick it up on this ruddy camera. What else have we got? Okay, so this is, I think, the star of the Porsche show, really. We've got the original 3.2 speedster here. And we've got this, the latest incarnation, the latest kind of GT product from Porsche. They teased this at Goodwood with their speedster kind of uh, concept prototype there. There's a few things I can see on the car that probably won't make it to production. So those wing mirrors, I doubt will meet or then cap ratings. That'll probably behead someone or something. So they'll end up having to take those off. But the design of the car is very, very cool. I believe it will have the four liter naturally aspirated uh, GT3 engine, if you will, in there, which is no bad thing, as we know that is an unbelievable power plant. And overall, I think they've nailed this car. I mean, look at the design of it. There's just something so cool about Porsche, especially with those rear humps and the little bridge between them. Very reminiscent of the original car it sits next to. But the one thing that strikes you when you are next to these two cars is the size difference. That is absolutely tiny compared to that. I don't know who he is, but he's doing it for the gram. And that's an all new wheel design as well. Nobody knows whether I'll make that to the final car. Who knows at this point? And then going across here, we've also got the original, original, I think 35 seat, the 356 speedster over there, which ultimately is what this thing is a kind of development of. You've also got the central placed fuel cap there. I don't know whether again that will make it to the final car. Who knows, but overall this thing is extremely cool. I love it, absolutely love it. And if I could get one of these in GT Silver with red seats or brown seats, I'd be all over it. But I think they're gonna be hen's teeth if indeed they even make the car itself. Inside the car then you can see it has the 918 bucket seats, 918 seats is not the actual name of them. It is the lightweight bucket seats or LWBs, the same as I've got in my Carrera T. But interior wise, it looks very, very standard to the usual 991.2 generation. Very similar to the Carrera that I've already got. Also worthy of note then on the Porsche stand, not really my thing, but this is the new Macan. This is a very important car for Porsche. Very, very important indeed. I believe I'm right in saying they sell probably more of these than anything else, or if not, they will do soon. This is extremely, extremely popular car for Porsche, and they've just uh, redone it, renovated it, facelifted it, whatever you want to call it but it does look very, very good. And we've got one in Miami blue here as well. It is quite a cool car. If you're gonna lug a family around, 
and you want to look cool and you want something that isn't actually rubbish to drive this is the one to get and this is featuring an all new rear tail light that kind of all fluidly moves through that's different on the updated one i'm sure there's loads of other updates but i really really don't know at this point in time in, inside here it's very very Porsche, but that is no bad thing there's something cool about just being able to lug your family around in one of these and having a Porsche that actually feels very sporty. So I've driven one of these many moons ago in America and I really, really enjoyed it. It was the Macan S, it was one of the early ones, but this new one's probably a lot better. So I'm quite excited to have a little go in one of these. Something else I've spotted on the Porsche stand. We have some other churning going on with Mr. Schmee. A wild Schmee in his uh, natural habitat, ladies and gentlemen. I can guarantee this video will be up way before my one. Mine will probably be out way later and you would have already seen it seen all this stuff coming around then onto the Audi stand the most exciting thing here I think personally is the PB18 e-tron now this thing is quite obviously a concept car there's a very interesting fact about this car the steering wheel can actually move into the middle along with the pedals for some reason or other it's obviously an EV is a thousand brake horsepower and it's kind of like a, a teaser concept sort of thing um, to tease out which may well replace the R8 I believe and it's got this kind of like shooting brake vibe to it but all in all very very cool and if this is the future of Audi and what their kind of the design inspiration is going to be I'm very excited for the future and you can just see a little bit of exposed uh, suspension arm in there as well very cool also on the Audi stand we have the Lamborghini Urus I mean sorry the Audi Q8 slip of the tongue there although on that topic this I believe will actually be a better car than the Urus I believe what they're going to do with this is like they've done with the Hurricane and the R8. They're going to put all their good tech in this car and leave more than basic stuff to the Urus. Obviously, this is a slightly more subdued engine. This is the 50 TDI Quattro, um, but there will obviously be at some point the SQ8 and RSQ8, which are going to be absolute monsters. And that would be my pick of the bunch. I'd probably go black grille, blacked out, no front plate, where well, the front plate will fall off and that would be my spec but I'm quite excited to see these in some slightly more punchy specs but this is a very very cool car and I'm excited to see these on the road more and more because I've seen a few in Europe already there we go here he is whilst we're walking between the halls then a little bit of watch trivia this is my choice of watch for the trip I have not brought more than one this is my choice it is the Tudor Black Bay Harrods edition many of you will be aware of this but there is a full video on this watch on my channel anyway I'm not being paid to mention this I just thought I'd show you because you guys like watches and I never show you what's on my wrist so here we go I'm gonna do it in more videos as well and on my feet I've got these horrible Gucci Ritens and they are horrendous so walking through the high end I stand I've done a full video on what these guys are launching this year and what they've got to show there's some very cool stuff so make sure you check that out and that video is probably already live on my channel or maybe it's uh, coming out in the next day or so it depends when you're watching it but make sure you go and check that out I'm off to Ferrari now though so I am on one of my favorite stands of all. Every single time, the Ferrari stand is somewhere that I just kind of gravitate towards. And Jason's been very kind here and let me on the stand. We have first things first, this unbelievable 812 here in an absolutely stunning triple, triple red paint. And this is actually making me think about changing my order once again on my 812. I know I've only just reconfirmed the spec on it. But this triple air red is absolutely incredible. I don't actually know the name of the color, to be honest with you. I know that's all a bit useless, but I have asked and someone's finding out for me what the name of the color is because I'm actually quite interested in changing my spec. Anyway, I'm not actually here to see this. This completely thrown me off course, this car. We've got a GTC for Lusso here as well, but I'm not here to see that either. I'm here to see the Monza, specifically the SP1 and SP2 over there. Now this is the launch of not only two new cars for Ferrari, but the launch of a new series. These are limited cars, and these are going to be the start of the new Icona series for Ferrari. So these are going to be kind of separate to the hypercar, separate to the kind of the, the special cars like the Pista, and obviously separate to the usual kind of road cars like the A12 here, the Portofino over there, and the GTC4 Lusso. And these cars are going to be in fixed numbers there's going to be 499 of these together and that is going to be decided by the clients themselves depending on whether or not people want the one or the two seater it remains to be seen which one's going to be more popular if i had my way and i had a massive car collection hopefully one day i will i would actually go for the single seater i think from the back of it 
coming over here. The back corner angle here, it just looks like a 1950s race car. There's something so cool about that kind of silhouette and profile there with the one hump at the back. However, obviously SP2 would be more practical and should you have any mates, which I actually don't, uh, it would obviously be more useful because you can go around with a friend in the car, but I don't have any friends, so I'd probably get that. Interestingly though, with this car, you do get a full race suit, uh, you get shoes, you get the whole lot, and that comes with the car. So you also get an open-faced helmet with the car, uh, allowing you to drive on the road, and that apparently has Bluetooth in it. So you can listen to the car, um, listen to the car, use your phone and whatnot, normal Bluetooth stuff. And in the SB2 over there, you will also get a helmet for the passenger, and you can talk to your passenger through that Ferrari helmet. How cool is that? So yeah, little facts that I didn't know about it. Technical stuff about the Monza then. It is based on the 812. Weight of the car is about 1500 kilos. Power is slightly up by about 10 brake horsepower. Uh, Nought to 60 time, I have absolutely no idea, but it's gonna be extremely quick. And also, coming around here, many of you will have noticed that there is no windscreen on the car. It's got this very, very cool virtual windscreen. Air comes through here, it's not even focusing, cheers camera. Air comes through here and then it kind of hits this and shoots up like that and stops the air fully going into the face of the driver, which I think is all very cool. Inside here then, and this is what I was mentioning in my 812 spec video, I don't even know that video has gone live yet, but these seats here, specifically in the SP1 behind me, I wanted these seats in my 812, but you cannot get them without the four point harness in there. So I've actually gone back and changed my order once again because I'd want normal seat belts, of course, in the car. Other things to note then about this car, there's loads of carbon detailing. Can you even see that there? Just, just around the wheel arch there. Obviously all around the back here, carbon diffuser. You've got this long flowing line around here which acts as the brake light as well. Carbon backs on the seats and the harness is also a strap to the structure of the car, the chassis of the car like that. But all these historical touches, like these kind of uh, belt straps here for the glove box, I believe, and this kind of carbon mainframe. And the interesting thing to note as well about the fact that this is based on the 812, obviously because they've taken the roof off, they've had to add a lot of uh, more torsional uh, structure to the whole thing to make it work because obviously they've ripped the roof off. But design-wise, I mean, just look at it. It's absolutely amazing. Price-wise then, it's going to be 1.6 million euros, I believe. Uh, and they expect them all to be sold out. They've got people harassing them for these cars, understandably. And a lot of people are going to want both of these cars. However, they're not going to be allowed to buy both of them. They're actually gonna to be told they can only have one. And that enables more people to get into the limited, more special Ferraris. And that has been kind of the, the aim of Ferrari here, releasing this series and these cars. They want more people to be able to get into the limited stuff because it's been quite difficult in the past and they are only allowing people to have either this one or that one. I am personally extremely excited to see these start getting spec'd up because some of the spec options are going to be potty. And one final thing I want to show you on this car, something that I know you guys know I love, painted shields. So this is what I've gone for on my 812. I've gone for these painted shields and not the usual enamel shields like on here. I think on the V12s, so let's go over to the 812, I'm gonna show you this. So on the V12s, the panel on the front of the car is absolutely enormous. So the, the XL painted shields look really, really cool. And this is not an example of such, this is the normal enamel shields. You can actually spec the car without them at all. Um, but as most dealers will tell you, the car will never ever sell and no one wants it if you don't have those shields. So both of the Monzas, lots of Italian people here, I'm getting in their way. The Monza has got the painted ones, which is exactly the same as I will have on my 812. And of course, this is based on the 812. So all in all, this is just making me excited for my 812, really. It just looks absolutely amazing. And if you're in the comments right now telling me to order one, A, I can't because they're too sold out and too popular and I haven't bought a million Ferraris. And B, I don't have the money. So unless you all want to go and buy a load of LDNM protein and some air fresheners and wire me some PayPal cash, then, then maybe, maybe we can do something. But until then, I've just got a dream. So I've just had some bubbly at Ferrari. And I've also just been looking at some leathers. 
all these leathery vibes. So I've actually just changed my spec once again to Coyo Toscana, apparently is the correct term. So it's kind of like a Coyo, which is like this kind of caramel tanny type vibe. But there's a bit of a like texture to it as well. My camera doesn't seem to want to focus, so that's absolutely fine. But I've just changed my uh, spec once again. And this is kind of their personalization part at the back of the Ferrari stand. But this Portofino here has got this really cool woven leather vibe. Whilst I wouldn't want it in my 812, I think it does look rather cool. And the paint on it, I've not seen before. I'm not really sure it's my thing, but it does give you an idea as the kind of customization possible. I do think the Portofino does look very, very nice indeed as well. Actually, I've seen something over here that's piqued my interest. I wonder if I can spec this steering wheel in my 812. I do like that, that's a bit of me. You got a bit of mahogany there. I think if you ask for that, they'll just tell you to get out, to be honest. I might do it. What's up there? Or maybe I should ask for that front end on the 812. Maybe they'd do that. I wonder how much that would be. It's chaos, absolute chaos. But there's all sorts of uh, customization options. We were actually looking through this. Some of this has to go through the tailor-made program, which at that point you would realistically need to be spending sort of 50, 60,000 on personalization options. But there's some really cool stuff that they do. So you can have kind of the Italian flag, on the edge of the paddle there, you've got sort of uh, flag vibes on a lot of it. You've got matte carbon bits, you've got this forged something or other, I don't really know. Um, but there's lots of cool options in here, and obviously you've got carbon center caps, which I actually put on my F12 back in the day, if you remember that car from my channel. But again, there's just a whole host of bits and bobs you can do. And you've got colors all up here. And you got the nose of an F1 car, obviously, for some reason up there. I think it might be now time to sign out of the video. At this point, I want to say thank you very much for watching this video, all my other videos. Do stay tuned, because some exciting stuff coming, especially with my A12 coming at some point. Anyway, from Paris, from myself, from the Ferrari stand, and everything else we've seen, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very, very soon. Bye!